All right, welcome. Hopefully everyone is doing all right after the storm. Um, let's see here. Oh, the live transcript is working, so that's nice. Uh, and also, I I finished marking your test ones, and then I, I didn't send out an announcement or anything because I was hoping to get more marking done before I did. Uh, kind of be a hero, you know, but uh, didn't work out that way. But uh, so your test one grades are there, but I think it's going to be so two of those marks are bonus marks. So when I move them to Moodle, I'll make it out of the, the right amount. But um, really good work. And I, I'm, I'm really pleased that stuff is really, really hard. And I'm, I'm happy with what I saw. So that's, uh, that's a pat on your guys' back. Uh, today, we're going to start um, a different textbook because we decided that wasn't, that was no fun at all. And so I, I want to kind of point you towards the new textbook. I posted it on Moodle. Oh, this is, okay, different. How do I, there. Oh, this isn't, that's not Moodle. It's my Okanagan. Uh, okay. So I did post it here and, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of what I, oh, and I also posted the solutions, the test one solutions. Uh, okay. So I posted the introduction to statistical learning, uh, which sounds basic, it's not going to be, but uh, we, because we're starting so late, uh, I wanna get through chapter two today and then, so chapter one is basically introducing you to the textbook, you know, what kind of notation are we using? So I encourage you to read chapter one on your own time, uh, but it's not really for us to go through. So we're going to get right into chapter two. And chapter two is still kind of introducing a lot of terminology and that kind of stuff. So I want to work through chapter two this week. And then my, my ideal situation is we work through chapter two and chapter three and chapter four, uh, because that would give us really good coverage on uh, regression, as well as um, for quantitative variables, as well as uh, kind of moving into logistic regression, which is more classification uh, for categorical variables. So that's, that's what I'm hoping to kind of get into. Uh, and that's going to be a really kind of good, good basis for uh, uh, this course. OK, so I'm trying to do a screenshot here, but it's not letting me do it. I wonder if they changed the, oh, do it from the other corner now. I guess I got there like a monkey. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. Um, nice. So let's see here. Save, and then I'm going to bring this in here. Okay, so uh, first I want to say great work on test number one. And then I want to talk about here, maybe I'll crop this out because you don't need to see that. How about that? So my goal, chapter two, it's going to be uh, aggressive to do chapter three in one week and chapter four in another week. But uh, I mean, I'll keep that in mind, but um, it's worth a shot. Chapter three and then chapter four. We will play it by year though. Okay. We do, uh, I, we're supposed to have two tests, right? So the course outline says we're going to have two tests. 
And so what I want to do is I want to have a test on this stuff. Okay. Uh, and it'll probably be on that Thursday. So we're not really going to talk about chapter four for more than one day, which is it, it's enough to, to introduce the key concepts. And so uh, probably here, maybe I'll highlight here or something. Um, Thursday, test number two. I'm allowed to do it that close to the final exam period uh, because it's worth 15%. So that's, that's a relief. And uh, it might be nice to have seen all the material that's gonna be on the final exam on a test as well, right? So test two would only cover this, this kind of, let's call it new material, right? And then, um, so that's, that's what I'm hoping, okay? And I posted the textbook, but you could find it uh, or download, from statlearning.com. What's really nice is uh, I think you might have to search around a little bit, but uh, it, Tib Sharani is a, is a really famous guy, really famous uh, kind of author and teacher. And, uh, and him, and I can't remember who the other guy is, but, uh, but they have videos and they wrote the textbook. So of course, if you if you ever want kind of different videos from what I'm saying, so I'm limited to kind of the time that we have, uh, but if you ever want kind of a different take or you know maybe explained a little bit more thoroughly, then uh, you can always watch those videos, okay? So check out statlearning.com. Yeah, sounds like a good resource anyways, right? So, uh, <clears throat> all right, let's get into it. So, like I said, this is kind of my, my goal. Uh, it's a little aggressive, it's a little ambitious, but that's my, that's what I want. So today we're gonna talk about, uh, I. I will give you a practice test before uh, before test two, because hopefully you found the the practice test helpful. Uh, that's it. That's my goal with the practice test. I don't want you to feel like oh, I had no idea what was coming. So, um, so I'm not I'm not trying to trick you. The practice test. I think you've probably found that it was pretty useful. So, uh, <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, so uh, section 2.1, and then of course, it would be really great if you guys could read ahead a little bit. I know you're probably busy, but, uh, but that would be ideal if you could read ahead uh, through chapters two, three, and four, and then we might have a chance. All right, so... Um, and I, I want to check in. My plan was to just post, uh, so I'll make videos for the remaining labs. Technically, we don't typically have a lab uh, in the last week of classes, but because we're the only section, I feel like we can have one. So I'm going to squeeze one in there. Rude, right? Uh, only because I want to practice chapter four stuff. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, I'll post videos for the Friday labs because I feel like we got used to that. Okay, so uh, chapter two, so here we're starting ISLR, which is the, the new textbook. Okay. And chapter two is called statistical learning. Now, statistical learning is, uh, is just a, a really broad term for pretty much everything that we can do with, with data. As soon as we're learning something from data, then we call it statistical learning. So it's a little bit misleading because 
you are learning statistics, but now you're learning about statistical learning. Weird. Um, so chapter two is called statistical learning. Right? Not to be confused with learning statistics, uh, which we'll also be doing. So of course, section 2.1, asks, what is statistical learning? Right. Whenever we have data and we want to learn something from the data, right? that is what we call statistical learning. So whenever we want to learn from data, we apply statistical learning. We apply statistical learning. Okay. Um, so one, one main thing that we do is prediction. Right? And so what if we have some, uh, some output variable that we're interested in predicting, and then we have some input variables? Now, chapter two uh, keeps it very, very vague. Right? We're going to talk in general about models. We're going to talk in general about you know, predictions and, uh, and inference. And then in uh, starting in chapter three, then we'll start talking about linear regression, multiple linear regression, and other types of regression, for example. So then we kind of go deeper into it. So uh, <clears throat> if we want to try to predict, want to try to predict uh, an output variable, And I'll define output variable because, of course, we're going to talk about that a lot. So if we want to predict uh, an output variable given some input variables, uh, potentially, so I'll put the S in brackets, okay. we apply statistical learning. We apply statistical learning. Okay. So let's talk about the input is denoted by X typically. And we've seen that before, right? Where we had this uh, random variable X. And so now we have input variables. Um, yeah, it's definitely, so we're going to talk about unsupervised and supervised learning and stuff like that. And so, yeah, definitely machine learning kind of took over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, um, so we'll kind of look at the, the background here. So, um, all right, so the input, just in general, we're going to use an X to denote it. And that's pretty typical. Usually we have more than one input, right? And so then we would use X1, X2, X3, X4. And I do want to warn you that there are some, uh, so that would make up a, a vector, right? Which we saw briefly, but uh, even in chapter one, they do introduce uh, some matrix operations, matrix algebra, and kind of vector operations and stuff like that. Um, but we probably won't need it. So if you're not familiar with matrices, then you're missing out. But also don't worry too much about it because I don't think we're going to get there. So, um, so don't be scared off by that in chapter one is what I'm trying to say. So the input is going to be denoted by and uh, if you, if you have worked with matrices before, they tend to win you over. So, uh, so you, you can kind of dive deep and, and do matrix work here, but 
uh, we're, we're going to try not to. Uh, so denoted by x, uh, and we typically have more than one have more than one input. So we distinguish using subscript. Oops. So we distinguish using subscripts. All right, so now we have some x1, x2, x3, all the way up to uh, xp typically we use. P equals predictors. You can use K or whatever, but um, but this textbook seems to use P for predictors. And that's just an, a, a subscript for the last um, X. As you might remember from STAT 230, right? If we're talking about some input variable and some output variable, usually we have some scatter plot and we've got an X variable and a Y variable in the most basic case, right? And so uh, there's a lot of terminology, but they're all uh, synonyms, right? And so you can call the X variable the explanatory variable. You can use it. Uh, you can call it the independent variable. You can call it uh, the predictor, usually in SAT 230, we wouldn't call it the predictor quite yet, um, but you can call it the predictor, you can call it just the variable, which is weird, uh, or you can call it um, a feature. I never call it a feature, but I, you can. Um, and so input, oops, input, uh, is the same as predictor, independent variable, feature, explanatory variable, or just variable? Oh, question? Maybe not. Just an accidental unmute, I think. There. Risky. Um, uh, oh yeah, so, or just variable, but that, that seems weird, right? Yeah. We use all of these interchangeably. Okay, so you're expected to keep track of, okay, they all mean the same thing, uh, but hopefully you've got kind of your memory palace and you can just put them all in a drawer and, and have them all mean the same thing. So we use these terms interchangeably. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so a lot of these we introduce, we usually call it the independent variable or the explanatory variable um, in STAT 230, but now we've got a couple more terms, but they all mean the same thing. Okay, so uh, the output, right, because we were talking about, okay, so if we want to try to predict an output variable, given some input variables, uh, potentially, we apply statistical learning. So we talked about the input. So now let's talk about the output. So the output, how did I show it, is denoted by y. Okay. And uh, we, we usually have uh, just just one output variable. You can build models. Oh, I didn't even spell output. Output. 
we can build multiple models for different Y variables. And this doesn't look like a Y there. Uh, but we, we don't typically try to work through more than one Y at a time, right? So we build models individually. Um, so denoted by Y. Uh, and of course we have different terms that we can use, but also the technique that we use depends on whether Y is either categorical or numerical, so quantitative or qualitative. Uh, and I know that's also confusing, that's more terminology, right? And so um, the statistical learning technique the statistical learning technique we apply will depend on whether Y is, I, I, I like the terms numerical and categorical because I, I just find that they're more telling about about what the data is, right? But you could also use quantitative instead of numerical, or you could use qualitative instead of categorical. And so uh, I'll include them both here, but uh, usually I just stick to numerical and categorical. So the statistical learning technique we apply will depend on whether Y is uh, numerical, which is the same as quantitative, or categorical, which is qualitative, okay? So we're gonna start and we will assume that Y is a numerical variable, okay? And then we're gonna switch and we're, we're gonna say, okay, well, what if I wanna look at a categorical outcome? So that, that seems weird, and that's an extension. We, you haven't seen that in STAT 230, right? But we do focus on numerical outcomes uh, definitely in STAT 230 and, and a lot of the time too. So uh, we will start by considering... Uh, numerical output, that's in chapter three, then move to categorical outputs or move to a categorical output in chapter four. Now, usually if we have a numerical output and you know what, I'm kind of uh, free handing this. So I did put 2.1, but I, I find myself kind of reaching into, uh, oh, I guess I'm not talking about the subsections. We're safe, we're safe. Ignore me or don't. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I had a little stopper in my mind going, oh, that's from the, the later part, but uh, I feel like it flows nicely here. So uh, usually if we have a categorical output, we end up calling it classification, not always, but typically called, typically called classification. versus a numerical output is called regression. Okay, typically. Okay, so usually when we say regression, we're talking about a numerical output, whereas if we're talking about classification, then we're talking about a categorical output. Now, um, they kind of, 
do the same thing, but it just depends on what we're trying to do, right? If you think about what it means to have a categorical output, well, it means that you have uh, an output that's in the group or not in the group, for example, right? With some probability. All right, so good. Um, so in general, what we're gonna see is we're going to have some, some model now, we talk generically about this model uh, and we call it f, okay? So f of x is going to be some model that we build uh, based off of the data. Okay. And so uh, we have seen maybe in stat 230, Right? We've seen some sort of relationship between X and Y, right? where you have your uh, output Y and your input X. Okay? And maybe you have some sort of, and maybe I'll make my pen a little bit bigger so my dots show up here. All right, so maybe uh, we have some relationship between uh, X and Y, so the input and then the output, and then what we, what, oh, too big. What we've seen then is maybe we fit some sort of line here, right? And this would be an option for a model, okay? So a simple linear regression is an option for a model. Huh? In general though, what we're gonna say is we're gonna say that the output is modeled by some f of x plus some error term. Okay? So here, in general, we will say that y, and this is just a y, is f of x plus the epsilon, which is the error term. Yeah. And so y is, uh, is the output variable, and that's the overall output variable, not just the output variable in your data, but any output variable. And then F, F is a function of X, which is of course uh, the input variable or variables, okay? So here, generically, right, we can talk about a model. So f of x is the model, or f is the model, and e is some error term. Okay. So oops, f is the model taking inputs of, and I'll put, the S in, in brackets here, taking inputs of X. Okay. But since the model can't capture everything, right? we know that there's some error term. Right? But, um, but no model can capture, um, can capture everything. So y is, uh, is f the model plus some error term. So y is a combination of f of x and the error term e. And this is an epsilon, just 
a lowercase epsilon. Okay, sometimes they write them like, like this, uh, but I find that this is a little bit easier and easier to pick out when you're reading. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we're always going to have some error term. Okay. And so, and X, right? Remember, X can have X1, X2, X3, X4, right? And so X can still have. Um, where x is some vector of x1, x2, all the way up to x subscript p, p predictors. Great. <clears throat> So um, when we talk about, okay, so F is, is trying to model what it can based off of the data typically, okay? Um, and so what we're gonna start calling it is it's, uh, it's the systematic information. So imagine you've got these X variables or even just one X variable. We can reduce it to just one X variable for now. Right, and so you, you have this X and uh, there is information there that helps you understand the output Y, right? So um, just as a, a quick example, if I told you that uh, you're looking at, because I, I'm assuming that you've all looked for rental properties or whatever, right? And so if I told you that uh, oh, it's a it's a one bedroom apartment, right? Then just knowing that that one variable, right, gives you a, a reasonable idea of what the output is going to be. And let's say the output is the price, right? The price per month. Okay. So then we could add other variables to improve the the output. The prediction is typically what we're talking about, right? Um, so we could add other variables. Okay, so then you would ask follow-up questions. Where is it located, right? That would help you uh, understand the price, right? So that would help you get a better estimate or a prediction for the price, right? Um, how long are you signing a lease for? That might uh, help you predict the price, right? And things like that. So, um, I don't know, are there roommates and furnished or not? Yeah, that's a great one, uh, right? And so all, all those variables or inputs, right? So all those inputs help us figure out what the, what the monthly price might be, right? And so, uh, but we also know that there's, you know, there is uh, there is kind of a difference in price. Now, usually people have a pretty good understanding of what the prices should be or are. So there isn't that much error, right? But if we look at, you know, tons and tons of data, then we understand that some landlords think that their place is worth a lot more or a lot less or whatever. So there is that uh, error term that we, we just couldn't possibly capture, okay? Um, because it's not one of the variables that we can consider, right? And so unless we have, you know, landlord information, that seems weird, uh, and the model would get huge. So, um, so there's always going to be that little bit of error that comes from, okay, well, there's no way I could capture everything that's going on, right? Um, and so just kind of... Uh, to make it more official, okay? Uh, and I've got a page break here, so I'll put it on a fresh page. F represents the systematic information that X can give us, okay? So there's, there's this kind of, okay, well, if it's, if it's a one-bedroom apartment, if it 
uh, you know, is furnished, if it uh, is available all year, if it uh, is uh, located downtown, for example, right, then those you can, those hold information, right, all those uh, variables or predictors hold information. So F represents the systematic information that X provides about Y, oops, provides about Y, while the error term is a random error term and it's centered on zero. Okay. Uh, while the error term is a random error term, which is independent of X, because otherwise it would have been absorbed into X, right? So which is independent of X and has a mean of zero. Okay. So all our modeling is going to uh, be based off of and yield error terms that are centered on zero, right? And so it's kind of a chicken or the egg situation, right? We have a mean of zero because all our methods have a goal of getting a mean centered on zero, right? But then that's always going to be true because we're not going to use a method that does anything but give us a, a mean of zero for the error terms. Okay. So we can rephrase the, the term statistical learning because what we said was um, we gave a couple of different options, right? Whenever we want to learn from data, we apply statistical learning. That's kind of vague still, right? But if we want to predict an output given some input variables, then we, we apply statistical learning, okay? Um, now, kind of more officially, statistical learning is really the set of approaches for estimating F, right? So how do we build that model F? Okay. The set of approaches for estimating F. So that's kind of the going to be our, our goal here, right? So what are some of these approaches that we could use for estimating F? Now, the one that you've seen is simple linear regression, right? And so the, the simple means it's just one predictor, so one variable of X or one X variable. And, uh, and then linear means that we're using a straight line to model. Uh, and then regression means that we have a numerical output, right? And so um, we have already seen simple linear regression, right? Which is an approach for estimating F which is an approach for estimating F. Okay. And just to highlight, the simple means that there's only one, one X. That's what the simple is. Okay, the linear comes from, so the linear means we use a straight line model. Oops, straight line model. 
And regression, we now understand, and it's, it's not cut and dry, but typically it means that we have a numerical uh, Y, right? So we have a numerical output. Okay, so saying something like simple linear regression or multiple linear regression, we understand what it means and it carries a lot of information in that little term, right? And so uh, multiple linear regression means that there's more than one X, right? Linear means that we're still gonna use a straight line or once we have more than one X, we have a plane, okay? But we don't need to kind of wrap our heads around that or anything, it just works. Uh, and then regression, when we say regression, we typically mean we have a numerical output, typically. Yeah. Um, so we've already seen, I'm scared to know how many words I skip all the time. Uh, so we've already seen simple linear regression, which is an approach for estimating F. So we've already, uh, we already have done some statistical learning, right? We just never call it that. Okay, so why, why do we care so much about estimating F? Well, there are two main reasons for estimating F. The first one is to make predictions, right? which we've seen. Uh, you probably had to build a linear regression model. You have to find the slope, you have to find the intercept. And then you have to use those, you give some value of X, you plug it in and you get a predicted value of Y, right? Hopefully that's sounding vaguely familiar from SAT 230. Um, and if not, we're gonna get back into it. We'll just uh, touch on it just briefly in, in chapter three, so don't worry. Uh, but we're gonna focus on multiple linear regression, but uh, we'll start with simple. Okay, so uh, so usually we're in it for predicting values. Okay, the other thing is that uh, sometimes we want inference, right? How much more can I charge in rent if I have a two-bedroom apartment versus a one-bedroom apartment, right? And so uh, so that would be considered inference. Okay, so we estimate. We estimate F uh, for two main reasons. Okay. Prediction and inference. Prediction and inference. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, for prediction, we're going to have some estimated model, right? And that's why we estimate F. And from that model, we can predict outcomes, right? We can predict outputs. Okay. So for prediction, <clears throat> we have some uh, estimated F, right? So some estimated model to make predictions about the outputs, right? And so use uh, an estimate of F, right? So the model to find predicted outputs or to calculate predicted outputs. Why? And maybe I should call it Y hat, right? Y hat is the predicted value of Y. And so just as an example, right? How much uh, more, sorry. I went to inference. Uh, no, the prediction is if I have, if I've found a uh, one bedroom apartment with, uh, you know, what that's downtown, that's furnished, 
how much should I expect to pay, right? So if an apartment is furnished one bedroom downtown, how much should I expect to pay in rent? Okay. Okay. So that would be a prediction, right? And so it is furnished, it's a one bedroom and it's downtown. Those would all be inputs, right? So here, these are all your inputs. And then we can find some predicted value, right? So how much do I expect to pay? How much should I expect to pay? Well, that's the predicted. Okay, our prediction. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me see. I had some theory here, but I just don't think I want to go into it. Maybe just to have it. I know it's going to sound uh, or feel reminiscent. There is a lot of theory, right? So it's hard to cut out all of it, uh, even for me. And I'm not even a huge, huge fan of knowing all the nitty gritty things. Uh, but in this case, it's only because I want to talk about the reducible error and the irreducible error because it comes back to, okay, our X's can only hold so much information, right? And so even if we could include all these possible values of X, there is still some variability in Y that we won't ever be able to capture, okay? And so that's, that's the goal of what I'm about to say here. Um, but I'll say it as I did in my notes here. Uh, assume f hat and x are fixed. That's not true, but let's just assume that they are, uh, are fixed so that the only variability, so that the only variability comes from the error term. comes from the error term, epsilon. Then what we can do is we can say, okay, well, the expected value of y minus y hat squared, okay. ha. I know why it's not making sense. I forgot to talk about y hat equals f hat of x. Uh, parking lot this for a little bit here. Whee. How about that? I'll move it up, but uh, <laughs> I talked about y hat here and then I never talked anymore about it, but it is a key player, right? Because we're trying to predict values of y. And so what I wanna say here is that y hat equals some f hat of x. Okay. Whereas where this, oops, maybe I'll use, is the predicted, predicted y, yeah. And f hat is the estimate of f. Notice that there is no there is no error term here because we're talking about our estimate and our uh, predicted value, right? And so uh, our predicted value it just is what it is, and we have this estimate. Right, and so notice, notice no error term, 
right? Because it's it's the um, the predicted value. Okay. No error term on the predicted value. or the estimate of F. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's gonna happen is now, this is where I was kind of jumping into, a little too soon maybe, there. Can't believe I didn't introduce Y hat equals F hat of X. That's okay. Uh, there it is, right? And so what we need to remember is that there's always gonna be some uh, population model, right? Which we're trying to estimate, right? But we don't, we don't know what it is. We're trying to figure out what it might reasonably be, right? And then there's always gonna be some estimate, okay? And that's the model that we're working with, right? And then we, we you know, do our best to make sure that this model, this estimate model kind of looks something like the population, right? But, um, but the estimate is just the, our best guess. Okay? So assume F hat and X are fixed. So the only variability comes from the error term. Then if we take the expected value of Y minus Y hat squared, Okay, so it's the squared uh, expectation of the actual y value minus the predicted y value. Okay, if we remember, then y is f of x plus the error term, right? So what we can do is we can talk about, okay, well, that's going to be the expectation of f of x plus the error term minus f hat of x and then square that, right? Because y is f of x plus the error term while y hat is just f hat of x, okay? So all we're doing is we're replacing the y's and the y hats with their f of x, so their model equivalent. Now, um, we can expand this and, and get crazy here, but what we're gonna find is that as long as we remember that uh, f of x is just a constant, right? So it's fixed. So what that means here is that, um, this is saying that the expectation of f hat of x is f hat of x because they're fixed. And the expectation of uh, x is x, okay? which also means that the expected value of f of x is f of x. But I think it's plenty. Okay, so what we can do is uh, we can bring in the expectation and then we have to square it, right? So then we'd have to, um, we would have to expand it, right? So there's some math missing here, but you can go back and fill in the gaps if you want to, but it's not necessary because all I wanted to get to was that we end up at f of x minus f hat of x squared plus the variance of the error term. Okay. So I'll just say expand, et cetera. And then, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we'll end up here, okay? And so f of x minus f hat of x, well, that's the, the actual value of y um, without the error term. So how much should be able to be captured by x minus how much I was able to capture with x using the estimated model. And then I square that. And then I have the variance of the uh, error term 
And this here is what we call the reducible error. Whereas this, and maybe I'll use a different color here, the variance of the error term is called the irreducible error. Okay. How is this reducible? It's reducible in the sense that, well, I can always build a, a better model to get closer to f of x, right? So it's reducible because we can always improve f hat of x to get closer to f of x. Reducible error since since we can we could improve f hat of x improve f hat of x right our model or our estimated model to uh, get closer to f of x to get closer to f of x. Yeah. So our goal is always going to be to try to uh, minimize the reducible error, right? Move my model as close to f of x as I possibly can. Okay. There's some problems there, like maybe we don't have enough variables. Um, maybe we don't know the actual shape of the population, right? That type of deal. Uh, but there's really nothing we can do about the error term. So the irreducible error is always going to be there. And the problem is that that becomes your upper bound on how good your predictions are, because, uh, or I guess the lower bound. Upper for a good prediction. What I'm trying to say is uh, there's always going to be some variance here, right? The variance of the error term. And so even if we reduce the reducible error to zero, there would still be some activity that we can't capture with just X's. And there's something else going on. So uh, we are always trying to minimize the reducible error. Okay. So trying to get our estimate as close to the actual uh, F. And it's tough because I'm talking about these generic Fs, right? But there's some population model, and then there's some estimated model. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's for our predictions, okay? The other uh, reason that we estimate F is for inference, okay? And so inference is when we're trying to learn something about okay, how much uh, of a difference am I expecting to see in the rent of a one bedroom apartment versus a two bedroom apartment, right? That type of thing. So that would be classified as inference. So the other reason, or maybe I should say, the second reason I, we estimate F is for inference. And maybe I'll just do a period here and start it just like the other one. So for inference, now we're trying to learn about the different components, 
right? And so we can still do inference on the prediction. So that gets a little bit messy, but uh, we could also talk about, you know, what if I, uh, how much, well, yeah, how much does adding a bedroom, for example, what's the difference between furnished and unfurnished in rental prices, that type of thing. And so we could ask things like which predictors or X's uh, are associated with the response, right? And so we can ask questions like which predictors are associated with the response Okay. When we set out and we're trying to uh, build a model for the rental prices, let's say in Kelowna, does it being uh, maybe if it's uh, February, does that make a difference to if it's in August, right? That type of thing. Or maybe there are crazy things that we, we understand won't help the model, right? But uh, maybe there are things like now I'm trying to think uh, how many cars were sold that year. We, we wouldn't include that in the model because we, we understand that, oh, that doesn't really make sense to put in there. But that's because we have this understanding of, okay, well, here are some of the things that might affect the rental prices, right? And so we wouldn't include how many cars were sold that year because we already know that that's not going to help, right? But as a statistician or data scientist or whatever you want to call it, they're all the same, right? Um, we don't necessarily have that background information. So typically what we have are just all these variables, all these predictors that we could use. We have some variable that we're very interested in predicting or learning about, right? And so then we we have to find variables that that help us in these predictions right so we don't always have that background knowledge and so one of the things that we could talk about is which predictors are associated with the response right what predictors should i include in my model uh, another thing that i could talk about in, in terms of inference is well what is the relationship Right? Is it positive? Is it negative on the most basic terms? Right? Or is it uh, linear? Is it nonlinear? Nonlinear opens up a whole box of nonlinear models. But, um, right? but what is the relationship? Okay. So the next thing, what is the relationship between the response between the response, oops, the response and each predictor. Okay. I guess that's a question. <clears throat> so once we've looked at that relationship, then we can talk about, okay, well, can I summarize this relationship with a linear model or maybe something a little bit more complicated? Okay. Can the relationship be summarized by a linear equation? or a more complicated model, or a more complicated model. <clears throat> As an example of inference, right, the one we talked about would be something like, okay, for example, how much uh, of an increase in the price, so in the rental price, 
should we expect to see between a one bedroom versus a two bedroom apartment? How much of an increase, because we know there's gonna be an increase. That's just something that we know, and that's not necessarily always the case that we know that there's gonna be an increase. Uh, but maybe what I should say generically, how much of a change in rental price um, should we expect uh, when going from a one bedroom apartment to a two bedroom apartment? When going from a one bedroom to a two bedroom apartment. Right. So that would be classified as inference. There's a lot of the time where there's overlap, right? So we make a prediction and then, uh, you know, we can build a, a prediction interval or a confidence interval if we want. Right, and so there's there's a lot of stuff that we can do here, but we're gonna hold off on that just a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I want to kind of emphasize is we talk about, okay, so we can have a linear equation, right? And so that would be considered kind of the most basic and not necessarily a simple linear regression, linear regression, but we can have a multiple linear regression where, where all the variables are just in there linearly, right? We just add in all the variables. There are options for more complicated models, but most of the time you're going to want to opt for the simplest model, okay? Especially in inference. Okay, so when we're doing inference, we need to uh, have a simple model, right? So uh, an easily interpretable model, because otherwise we're not going to be able to talk about it. Okay, it kind of switches when we talk about predictions. For predictions, then you can go nuts. You can have this crazy, crazy model, uh, because all you're trying to do is get good predictions. Yeah. And so uh, in constructing a model, in constructing a model to be used for inference, right? Simplicity is key. So in constructing a model to be used for inference, Simplicity is key because otherwise it's really hard to interpret. Because otherwise it might be too difficult to interpret. Too difficult. to interpret the model or the coefficients in the model. Okay. So if we're using it for inference, then you want to have a really simple model, right? Whereas if we're constructing it for prediction purposes only, Okay, so if you're only using it for prediction, then you can go ahead and you can fit a crazy, crazy model, right? Have all these variables in there, even if the variables are only contributing a little, little, little bit towards the accuracy of your prediction, then go for it, right? And so you don't want to do that if you're trying to learn something about the data, right? If you're trying to do inference, um, for example, if you had, right, if you're talking about the rental price and we're going from one bedroom to a two bedroom apartment, 
we assume everything else is head, held steady, but then maybe there's an interaction term, uh, which we'll talk about later, but uh, you know, maybe the prices of the one bedroom depend on the location, right? And so then we might have uh, these, these kind of um, interjoined kind of relationships. And then that makes it really hard to talk about, right? And so uh, we focus on simplicity for inference, right? Whereas... Whereas if a model is to be used uh, for prediction only, for prediction only, then the model can be as complicated as necessary, right? As long as it increases the accuracy of your predictions. So is to be used for prediction only, then the model can be as complicated as necessary as necessary, right? If it increases uh, the accuracy of your predictions or as long as it increases the accuracy of your prediction or of the prediction. Okay, so what you can think about is, okay, so usually, right? If you're getting from point A to point B, well, let's assume that there's city blocks, et cetera, right? And so we've got these kind of city blocks here. Bah, 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 bah. Right? Usually we would take kind of the simplest route to get to point B. All right, so maybe we would go out here and we would maybe, uh, whoops, backtrack a little bit because I overshot it. All right, so that would be our simplest model, right? That's how I would imagine our simplest model looking. All right, so this is a simplest model. There are other routes too that would be kind of equivalent Right, we could go up here and over here, right? And so there's lots of different simple models that we could take, right? Whereas if we want to really overcomplicate the model and say, oh, okay, well, actually you wanna go, uh, you wanna go down here and maybe down, oops. You wanna go down here and maybe over here and then over here and then maybe down here and then over here and then over here and over here and over here, right? That would be a, a, kind of a, a more complex model, right? Maybe there's something interesting over here, right? Maybe there's, you know, a beach or something that's supposed to be a sun that doesn't look like it, right? Maybe there's something interesting over here, but to get from A to B, if that's the goal, then you wanna go for the simplest model. Right. So uh, there are lots of ways to think about this. And, and you know, <laughs> this maybe doesn't make sense. This is how it works in my brain. Right. I want to have kind of the, the easiest, most straightforward model that I can. Right. But maybe going through and winding through all these streets, uh, maybe that contributes something to uh, to getting to be right. Maybe there's a, a sightseeing spot or something here. Right. A sightseeing spot in our data would be maybe some extreme value that I'm trying to kind of bring into my model and I'm trying to capture everything that could possibly happen along the way. Right. Um, what we're going to find is that often a simple model is going to perform uh, almost as well, even in predictions, uh, as a, a more complicated model. Right, and so we will find 
we will find that simple models right simple meaning you know linear models or or something like that kind of easy to construct and easy to understand models uh not in terms of simple like and maybe that's why i shouldn't use simple not in terms of one variable uh we'll find that um simple models here i said it again such as linear regression okay uh often predict surprisingly well often predict surprisingly well oh and okay so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about parametric tests and non-parametric tests okay and so the the gist of parametric tests is going to be okay so i have this i i think it fits it follows a straight line pattern right so i am going to fit a linear model okay so um uh we can conduct or we can build parametric models i should say we can build uh two types of models the parametric okay means we we head in there with with an idea of the shape right and so we say okay this looks like i could model it with a linear regression right and so uh we uh we look at the data and predetermine the type of model to apply and predetermine the type of model to apply. Right? Uh, linear model, for example. Right? If I look at it and I say, okay, I can model this, this with a straight line, then I build my model uh, based off of that. So, for example, we see a, a simple linear model is that y is beta naught plus beta one x plus the error term, right? And then we just try to estimate estimate beta naught and beta one, right? So that would be a parametric model. And I know I'm out of time, but I just wanna squeeze in the non-parametric model. Non-parametric model, we kind of uh, go in with no explicit assumptions and we let the data take it away, right? And so we have no explicit assumptions. assumptions about the functional form of f about the functional form of f what's the problem with non-parametric methods is that it really requires large sample sizes to be able to learn from the data it requires large sample sizes i'll leave it there but that brings us into big data and all that kind of fun stuff but i uh, will parking lot that for now so uh if you have any questions let me know uh otherwise see you on thursday